Nvidia did the unthinkable. Steam Deck gets a major update and AMD wipes the floor with Nvidia. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So we're gonna start off today talking about the unthinkable happening. I've seen many reports of hell freezing over Satan thinking it's chilly because Nvidia, nobody thought this would happen, has finally released open source GPU drivers for Linux. This is a day that many people thought would never come. AMD's been doing this for years and Nvidia was just like, You'd have to reverse engineer it if you want any sort of driver support that's not provided by us, so just suck it. But that has now changed with a blog post over on Pharonix indicating all of the details of what this open source driver means with regards to all of this. And it's specifically the Linux GPU kernel modules that are available. It looks like this open source kernel driver will be available for most of their graphical offerings, not just the data center GPUs, but also the gaming versions. However, there is a caveat to that. It will only apply to Turing and later, not anything that's before that. So if you're on Volta or prior, it's not gonna account for this. But also note that the driver is currently alpha quality according to Pharonix, which likely means that it's not necessarily going to be ready for you to hop onto Linux and play video games just yet, or for me to be able to take my 3090 Ti and slap it onto a Steam Deck. But it's genuine open source kernel code as they mentioned, but the user space libraries, however, are remaining closed source. So things like OpenGL, Vulkan, OpenCL, and CUDA drivers are not being provided by NVIDIA at this time. The community might have to rally together in order to make that happen over on Linux. So gaming, likely not in the future right now. Productivity, likely not in the immediate future. It's probably going to have to be developed by the Linux community, but this does appear to be a huge step forward by NVIDIA in order to provide some sort of open source drivers. And you have installation opt-in options for which driver you're going to install, whether it's the open source one or otherwise, NVIDIA is gonna give you the choice with that with them saying in a blog post this release is a significant step toward improving the experience of using nvidia gpus in linux for tighter integration with the os and for developers to debug integrate and contribute back for linux distribution providers the open source modules increase ease of use they also improve the out-of-the-box user experience to sign and distribute the nvidia gpu driver so this does seem to be a gesture of good faith by nvidia towards the linux community and there's a lot of people wondering why exactly this is happening. Is it NVIDIA just kind of moving forward with things that they've kind of been hinting at lately? Is this in response to the fact that AMD has actually been very generous with their open source drivers? Or could this be potentially a preemptive strike against Intel and whatever driver development they might be doing on Linux? NVIDIA likely wanting to stay at the top of the game. So probably giving the people who actually make stuff on Linux an incentive to use NVIDIA drivers if they see that they could potentially lose share later on towards uh, either Team Red or Team Blue. But again, I cannot overemphasize just how unexpected this move was. If you look through all of the commentary and posts about this, the thought is that just people never imagined that this day would happen. NVIDIA was going to remain closed source forever. This is something that they always try to do until the very last minute, until the market forces actually puncture their hands open and make it so that they have to bleed the goodness out into the community themselves. If that doesn't happen, NVIDIA is going to keep it all in their tight leather jackets and you you're not gonna be able to get it. But let me know if this changes your plans for GPUs on Linux. Let me know if this changes your plans of which card you're going to use. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. But while Nvidia is expediting plans to release Linux drivers that are open source, uh, Bethesda, De de expediting, delaying is typically the word used there. Their plans to release Starfield and Redfall. They were supposed to come out later this year, but in a blog post, Bethesda announcing that they've both been pushed to the beginning of 2023. This is actually quite an impactful thing, at least on Xbox's side, because these were first party exclusive titles. Now that Xbox owns Bethesda, they were supposed to be some of the biggest titles to happen this year for Xbox, and it doesn't look like that's necessarily going to happen in a ready time frame, but Again, I'm all for games getting delayed in order for them to get polished. I think I'm a bit more for not setting unrealistic release dates. But what's also been delayed is the recovery of the crypto market. Let's get into the crypto stocks, everybody. Bitcoin up 0.6% right now in the last 24 hours, but still below $29,000. It had a midday crash to around $25,000. So the crypto market having a hard time overall. And I believe for the first time in a very long time, the price of Tether 
Ether, which is a US dollar stable coin, which is supposed to mean that the coin of the cryptocurrency is pegged to the US dollar because there's actual real assets to back it up, whether or not that's true and whether or not that's actually shady. And there's a lot of obfuscation there happening. I'm not going to get into that. But for the first time in a very, very long time, it crashed below a dollar to 95 cents, which doesn't seem significant. But considering that's supposed to be backed up by real money, if the currency actually gets devalued like that, that could potentially create a death spiral for stable coins, making it so that they're not worth anything at all. Like what happened with Luna. But Ethereum not having as good of a day as Bitcoin being down roughly 5% to be at 1951. Dogecoin also down 2.59% to sit at just roughly 8 cents. The crypto market having a hard time over Overall. But in case you want numbers to go down on the goods you're purchasing, we can bring you UFD deals, the hottest tech deals on the internet, presented by Reese. And today we've got the Logitech G433 7.1 wired gaming headset for $51.49. That's a discount of 49%, the lowest price in 30 days, in case you want to pick those up over on Amazon. We also have the Logitech G413 backlit mechanical gaming keyboard coming in at $50, which is a discount of 44%. And the Steam Deck's discount and some updates in that they're giving them to the gamers who have Steam Deck for free. You can get free updates that actually allow you to have a feature a lot of people have been asking for since launch, which is per game profiles with regards to how you want the Steam Deck to run. So, and you can see here in this example with Elden Ring, you use the per game profile in case you want the refresh rate to run at 40 Hertz, but you also want the frame rate to run at 40 FPS. So those are in sync and then you don't get as much screen tearing and issues with that. And then you can turn it on per game profile. So it'll allow you to either get a smoother experience or you could potentially even drop the FPS all the way in games that don't really require it as much in case you want to extend the battery life and then you can save that profile. The Verge article does note that this only is like a one game profile. You can't do it differently if you're on battery or AC power, which seems like it should be a feature that should be implemented. So maybe Valve will update this in the future, but as it stands right now, this is a welcome improvement for Steam Deck owners and there's a lot more AMD owners with AMD gaining CPU shares in the desktop market, even when the desktop market is kind of falling down overall. You can see here that AMD CPU market share has gone up. They've increased to 27.7% of the x86 market share in the general market, despite the fact that the entire desktop PC market declined in the last quarter for just CPU sales in general. But another big announcement for AMD, FSR 2.0 coming out today in Deathloop and reviewers got their hands on it, were able to make videos and articles about it and it does appear to be a really good competitor to DLSS, including this tech power up article indicating that might be the DLSS killer so that you can get faster frame rate for a very little performance penalty. As you can see right here, there are four different modes for FSR 2.0. And if you go to the tech power up article linked in the video description, they have a very handy tool where you can go back and forth between the two different modes that you want to compare. So on this example, it looks to me like the FSR 2.0 is a little bit more jagged, especially here on the gun but in case you want to see what it looks like compared to FSR 1.0 on quality, you can see that FSR 2.0 is a massive improvement over the way that AMD used to do things. The general conclusion that I'm reading is that it's nearly as good as DLSS, which is impressive for several reasons. Number one, AMD cards do not have tensor cores baked into them, which is how Nvidia achieves DLSS. Number two, FSR 2.0 should be available for essentially every GPU out there. And then it's just mostly game supports that should happen. I would love to see this being implemented on the Steam Deck as well. So the fact that it doesn't require fancy hardware and the fact that it runs on all hardware is just a very good reason to potentially consider using FSR over DLSS, depending on what system parts you have. Let me know if you're going to check out FSR 2.0. Deathloop's not a game I'm particularly interested in. Arcane Studio games just don't grab me, but let me know if you tried it out. Let me know if you enjoy it. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. With that being said, I'll see you back here on Monday for more tech news, my friends.